Systemic therapies for unresectable or uh, metastatic cutaneous squamous cell cancers have included in the past cytotoxic chemotherapies or epidermal growth factor receptor targeted therapies. Recently, uh, PD-1 blockade has come into play and semiplomab was approved last year as a uh, therapy in unresectable locally advanced cutaneous squamous cell or metastatic cutaneous squamous cell. Semiplomab was approved last year in the indication of advanced uh, cutaneous squamous cell and metastatic cutaneous squamous cell. After seeing uh, data presented from two separate uh, clinical run-ins, one from a dose finding study and one specifically in cutaneous squamous cell. There they reported response rates uh, approximately 50%. That's been our experience too in this tumor type. Um, the tumor type perhaps being highly mutated has some few characteristics about it and that is a high response rate to these uh, PD-1 blocking antibodies such as semiplomab as well as quick responses. For example, I've had patients come in that had bleeding lesions, maybe had a lot of pain, and after one or two infusions, the patients are reporting back that they feel positive change uh, for the lesions. It's a little unusual for immune therapies where responses are often delayed. However, we've seen um, both uh, a high rate of response as well as a quick, uh, quick response uh, with semiplomab. Semiplomab toxicities are similar to other agents in this class. So oncology is getting very familiar with PD-1 blockade and we know that depending on the dose, schedule, as well as the combination with other agents. So semiplomab is given as a single bolus infusion once every three weeks. And with, with that kind of dosing as a single agent, I expect around 10% grade three or higher toxicities. The type of toxicities we usually see include fatigue, a little bit of loose stools, some rash, but generally toxicities that are managed well by the patients and don't require dose interruptions. It's that 10% um, of colitis or pneumonitis or a rash that means we have to stop and intervene appropriately either with steroids or higher immune suppression. We also have to be cognizant that you know, those rare situations such as neurologic toxicity or cardiac toxicity, uh, which can happen. Counseling patients on semiplomab is again similar to other PD-1 blocking antibodies. We personally, um, will counsel the patients at least several times before administration of the drug. They're given printed material on toxicities, they're given website access uh, for toxicities and numbers to call. They also are given cards to carry. But we sit down and discuss just the basic mechanism of semiplomab and PD-1 blockade, which leads to any kind of immune activation. And so, Getting the patient to understand that mild things can happen, definitely want to hear if there's any concerns, but those can usually be managed by themselves. But anything they think is beyond mild, uh, we want to know. So patients are, are heavily counseled and then followed up with during therapy. For severe reactions to semiplomab or PD-1 antibodies, um, almost always the first line of defense, besides just stopping the medication, is um, our doses of steroids that can be as high as uh, one or two mg per kilogram. Now these toxicities, um, we use a grading system. Uh, for example, more than six stools a day is gonna be a, a grade three toxicity, which triggers a response. And so in the clinical trials, uh, responses were outlined that are very similar to what the NCCN recommends as far as immune-related adverse event uh, management for any of these checkpoint inhibitors and can be effective if implemented according to the guidelines.